All right, how did the Astros keep doing it? Because every, like last year, they got Verlander. This year, they got Zach Granke. They got Aaron Sanchez, Joe Biagini. They just always pull out some crazy trade at the deadline. So today, we're going to be looking at the Astros and the Zach Granke rebuild. I mean, it's just, whoo. I mean, yeah, the, the Diamondbacks did get some pretty good prospects in return. JB Buskowskis, they had Seth Beer as well as Corbin Martin. I think that's a really good trade for the Diamondbacks as well. They get some really good pitching prospects as well as Seth Beer. So it's just crazy what the Astros were able to do. So if you guys want to see some more rebuilds around the trade deadline, let me know which ones you want to see in the comment section down below. Like the video if you enjoyed it. If you're new to the channel and you enjoy the content, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you guys go to any... You know, if you guys need tickets for basically anything, go to SeatGeek, use the code ANTHORTEES, and get $20 off your purchase. So, with that being said, let's just get into this rebuild because I don't know how the Astros do it, but, I mean, now they got even better. Alrighty, so normally I put the roster right here. Today's video is a different roster than I am going to use for the foreseeable future. The username Riding Rosters, which is right here, that's who I'm going to be using basically for the rest of MLB unless something else comes out. So, that's the roster I'm going to use from now on. So now that we're talking about the squad, it makes it difficult because Zach Granke's contract is massive, right? And you already got Verlander, you have Altuve, Brantley, you got Garrett Cole who's leaving, who looks like he might actually leave unless the Astros find a way to open up some, some salary because whew, they got some big contracts here. So we'll have to figure something out, see what we can do. I definitely do want to make at least one or two trades before the season starts. But when you look at the squad, I think it looks really good. Obviously, they brought in Martin Maldonado as well. They somehow kept on to Kyle Tucker during the trade deadline. Um, pitchers like Aaron Sanchez were brought in to help with the rotation with Brad Peacock being injured this year. Um, they also brought in Joe Biagini, who I don't think will feature here just because he's really not better than what we currently have. But again, it's just crazy how the Astros get so strong every single year when they're already one of the best teams in baseball so let's make a couple trades let's see what we can do with this squad so basically the big issue i have with this squad is the catching position so what we're going to do is we're going to trade away robinson chirinos we're going to get rid of an extra pitcher in wade miley and then we're going to trade jason schroeder for pedro severino of the orioles i mean his stats aren't too terrible he's 25 years old you know, I think he's only going to get better. He's going to have a small contract. I think this is a decent little pickup for us. What I'm going to do is I'm going to trade for Trevor blows them all of the Tigers now for Josh Reddick. We already have the right fielder in um, Jordano Alvarez or Jordan Alvarez. I know it's that's what it is. I'm telling you now he wants to be called Jordan or Jordan. So that's that's his name. Josh Reddick's contract's big. We need to be able to pull players in from free agency and other trades. So. Let's get rid of that. Let's get half the like half the money and Trevor blows them all. And that might be it for trades. Let me see what we could do with the lineup a little bit more. But I think we might be set right there. Alrighty, so that, that really is going to be the moves. I, I kind of looked at it and that's what I wanted to rock with. This is our lineup. We don't have a lot of lefties. We do have Kyle Tucker on the bench who is a player. I somehow want to get into this team. I don't know how though. Um, it all really depends on maybe if Michael Brantley does poorly. But he always hits around 300. So I think we're just going to leave it like this. Not too many changes. Um, and then the pitching rotation. We do have an aging pitching rotation with Verlander, Cole. Or not Cole. Cole's young. Uh, Verlander, Granke. Um, Lance McCullers is probably a player I'm going to look to move. Uh, you know, it's just one of those players. Chris Devensky kind of did poorly in recent memory. So he may be a player I look to move as well. But we'll, we'll wait and see. We'll see how things develop. We obviously do have Forrest Whitley here who may develop quickly. I don't know. Uh, we have quite a few pitchers here that we should probably move over into the starting rotation. Maybe. Um, we'll, we'll go with that for now. But for the most part, this is what we're rocking with. I think the the addition of Trevor Rosenthal blows them all, whatever you want to call him. He might be good. Um, hopefully. Hopefully. And then the lineup is, is really strong. So, I mean, the Astros only got better. The big thing is budget-wise. Are we going to be able to hold on to some of these key players um, when we need to? So, we'll, we'll wait and see. But that's the squad for season one. I'll see you guys at draft day. So I was thinking about skipping the draft day because I was thinking about how strong this Astros team is. And one, I was thinking, if I don't win a World Series with this team, I really suck at winning World Series. And then two, I was thinking, I don't know if we're going to find a prospect that's really going to be able to help us until this happens. So you guys see this? This is really solid. And to think that the prospects that the Astros will get in this draft is just crazy because we got... A fifth round 86 potential pickup here in Herb Berkowitz. What a name. We got 77 DeAndre Aoki. 
again what a name then we got uh richard gabriel or gabriel we got eric samuels who's decent but these two are like oh the cream of the crap we got a 61 overall uh, uh alberto ariano and then we have junior campos a catcher from puerto rico who's 74 overall of course we just traded for a new catcher look at those power numbers good arm strength i mean he's a lefty bat too man we just traded for a catcher and we don't even we, we probably won't even need one now um so i'm thinking of course right so there's the draft let's let's just see how the rest of the season plays out so the deadline the trevor rosenthal projects just it's not working it's not working we're also going to trade away brad peacock because he's he's struggling a little bit as well with almost the like a 7.25 era we're gonna go for a lefty yes his contract's pretty big but he's having a great year we i think we do need a lefty in the bullpen i think that'll help us out a little bit so there's the first trade of the deadline all right so we're giving up a little bit more than we need to um i might actually see if we can get uh oh okay that actually works perfectly yuli guriel's dipping in rating quite quickly you guys can see that and to pay him eight million next year when he probably won't even make the major league squad is a little bit too much so we're gonna trade him and uh sionel perez for leonis martin that was the only way to get the deal across and a young reliever who I'm hoping maybe he can hop into the squad next year or even season three in James Karinchak. I think that's his name. Um, his, his per nines look pretty solid already. He's 23, 74 overall. I kind of like this move. So after those moves, this is what we're looking at. Um, I mean, the squad looks okay. Pedro Severino's having a little bit of a down year. The thing I see is he can play first base. So I'm thinking about moving Severino to first next year. Well, we have that new catching prospect coming into the squad. And then our bullpen currently looks like this with Andrew Miller in it. And then Frances Martez is coming up to pitch for us. I'm worried about his per nines a little bit, but we'll see. If anything, we could potentially move him here. And then we can bring up someone like Framber uh, Valdez, Josh James. We have a couple decent little pitching prospects down that we could, you know, help us out. And not this season, maybe the next year or season three for sure. So overall... I'm liking what we're doing. We're, we're building a little bit of a core. We also have players in the farm system, especially pitching, that we can look forward to the next couple seasons. So, so far, so good. Let's see how season one finishes. All right, like I said already, if I don't win a World Series with this team, it's going to be brutal. So, I think we're we're in the right the right direction, right? We're going we're going in the right direction. 102 and 60, taking on the winner of the wild card. Um, let's take a look. League leaders wise, George Springer, a player I was worried that may not do too well actually had a, a phenomenal year and then justin verlander does justin verlander things the thing is i'm worried that justin verlander is going to start to fall off in rating very quickly george springer with a triple crown i didn't even realize that man silver slugger mvp rookie of the year for jordan alvarez and then we got george springer with hank aaron we got a gold glove and a cy young so we won a crazy amount of uh, awards there when we look at the squad Aled miss diaz was pretty solid off the bench Martin Maldonado, eh, you know, whatever. Uh, Michael Brantley, this is probably the lowest I've ever seen him perform in a franchise. But 270, 346 on base percentage. I mean, those are still really good numbers. Um, good amount of home runs, RBIs in the leadoff spot too. Uh, Jose Altuve is a beast. 21 home runs, a 332 average. Almost 400 on base percentage. Whew. Uh, Carlos Correa hit 290. I mean, second base and shortstop, you don't have to worry about it at all with these two. Unreal production. George Springer was MVP, Triple Crown winner, just unreal. 45 home runs, 144 RBIs, 42 doubles, 350 average, and OPS of 1133. Jeez. All right, let's see what Alvarez put up. He hit 36 home runs, 110 RBIs. Jeez. Wow, that's that's just crazy. Good amount. I mean, that's those are good numbers from Bregman as well. Mariznick wasn't too bad. Kyle Tucker, he kind of filled in there in the outfield the second half of the season and he had a great year so i gotta find a way to get him into the squad because it's looking like he's he's a player we need to get in. so maybe just keep alvarez at first move tucker into the outfield and then we have severino here who's actually he he kind of warmed up the second half of the season too so we we kind of have a a cluster of maybe move alvarez or keep alvarez in right move tucker to left and then Severino to first, and then we have that catching prospect. I think that might be the move. That way, we also open up quite a bit with Brantley's big contract here with 16. So that might, with 16 million on his contract. So that might be the move there. Let's take a look. Justin Verlander was just 
gross and it, you can see he's going down in rating pretty quickly so that's a player i gotta look out for because we're paying him quite a bit of money um garrett cole i might let him walk as crazy as that sounds i think we may be able to you know open up quite a bit of cap space because he usually does ask for about 20 million a year we have granky that we have to worry about who has a 34 million dollar contract and this is the rebuild about him so we got to make sure we keep him around lance mccullers is another player we may trade too so we may need a new you know three four five pitcher because frances martez just doesn't cut it McHugh did quite well presley davinsky joe smith um andrew miller did well harris rondon and osuna i mean we're we're pretty set with our pitchers he went up i think one or two ratings since we traded for him be a genie's here who i mean he, he's not amazing but for just in case we you know have some struggles with the bullpen frambeer valdez could probably be a bullpen arm as well i think we have sanchez arbitration but he just doesn't really fit in the squad anywhere um so we'll have to wait and see what we can do with the pitching because there's definitely some question marks there looking at our roster here we have miles straw who's up to a 74 um and that's really about it to look out for we do have this shortstop freudis nova who has quite a bit of trade value so he may be a piece to find a new pitcher or something like that so let's see what this Ooh, the yankees okay so we're taking on the yankees and we win the first two and then just fall apart in games three and four which is not good not good at all we'll, we're gonna have verlander pitch um i mean there's just no reason not to looking at their lineup it does that jd martinez in the dh spot I think it is other than that it looks like a pretty standard yankee squad and he starts it off with a home run cameron maven really we get one back thanks to el tuve so it's one to one runner was thrown out going home oh man that's tough all right so we start off with a single runner was thrown out at home again that's two times where we had a chance to score get the lead back and we weren't able to so a little bit of a pitching duel going on here and uh the double sack fly gives them the run. Come on, Verlander. Gets out of it. So that's six innings. Can we get one back before we take out Verlander? All right. So that's his last inning for sure. Jordan Alvarez comes back with one. Then Aledmiz Diaz does. Um, all right. So we're going we're gonna to change pitchers. We're going to go to... Oh, man. They have an all righty lineup. We're going to go to Rondon. See if he can get us out of this. Come on. Our setup man can't even get us through that. Come on. They bring in Batances. We don't do anything. Looks like we can't trust Rondon. I guess we go to Osuna. I guess maybe we should have gone to Osuna, but that's a six pitch out. I don't I don't really know if that's the move that is right to go to the six pitch out. Do we go with Mariznik here? No, we'll leave in Tucker. Alvarez. That, that's a rough one to lose because Rondon had a really good year. And, you know, I would have I would have just, I would have backed him to really shut the door there. And, unfortunately, it doesn't happen. You know, I think we made all the right moves. We went to the right pitchers. We went to the right everything. And then just Rondon fell apart. You know, a six-pitch out for a save, I just don't think was something that we should have done there. So, losing there is rough. That one hurts because I don't feel like we... The Dodgers defeat the Yankees. Basically, I feel like we, we should have won that. So let's keep going. Um, let's see. Nobody retires. Looking at the Hall of Fame, it's usually the same thing. So I'm looking at this. Will Harris usually does good for one more season. Um, let me take a look at Joe Smith. They both did really well. It's just they're aging pitchers. And I don't know if I, you know, if one of them is going to do really well really bad so will harris i'm going to give or do we do it to joe smith we're going to give will harris one more year he's not going to be a closer unfortunately let's see if we can get him down to like six that might be enough rondon it's like you know after what just happened can i trust you man i'll, I'll go with a low offer and i'll see how that goes we're gonna let the rest walk i know garrett cole leaving is like why would you do that but like i said it's a lot of money that we probably don't have to work with right now um so let's take a look at arbitration um he had a good year so i feel like maybe one more year i think we're gonna let sanchez go that opens about three million in salary space as well and then we'll give we'll give these six arbitration contracts wise yeah we're gonna give everybody a contract here 
Uh, Hijini, let's see. It's a small contract. I think we can afford that. So, well, do we really need him? And I feel like we could probably get some. No, we're going to let Biagini walk as well. So those will be the contracts that we do. So to start season two off, season two, almost at season three, season two, we're going to trade McCullers for Jamison Tyone of the Pirates. Um, the stats are pretty similar for pitchers, but for some reason, Lance McCullers just struggles in a sim style franchise. So we're going to try Jamison Tyone. I don't think we've traded for him in quite some time. Um, I think it's been since like the beginning of the game. We're also going to throw in Chase McCormick and Eric Samuels. So I think that's really the only move we're going to make because um, the team looks really good. I mean, once we throw Tyone over here, you guys can see we brought in Jeremy Jeffers for um, the Brewers. He was in free agency and because Will Harris didn't want to sign with us. So he left. Um, we're going to use Presley and Miller as our setup. I'm not too sure about Presley. Maybe put Rondon back there. We'll see. We brought Rondon back. We brought back Joe Smith for a season. I have faith in him for at least one more year. Um, and you guys can see how everything's looking here. Um, I'm kind of interested to see how Karen Chak, Karin Chik, however you say his name. I want to see how he's going to do. Um, I'll get this all sorted, obviously. But we'll take a look at the squad one more time because uh, there's a couple changes. We brought in Eric Sogard. And then that was really it from the free agency market. When you guys look at what we're working with, the squad looks really good. Um, I'm going to keep Brantley for this season. And then next year, Kyle Tucker will take over and left. Um, I think that's the right move. Kyle Tucker did do very well, but I think for now, we're going to go with that. As you guys can see, why is Eric Sogard there? We'll, we'll leave it. Um, Junior Campos is in the bigs. He's going to play first base. He does have that secondary position. I'm really tempted just to make him a second baseman or a first second. His first base secondary. I'm really tempted just to make him a first baseman and then just bring up a catcher as the backup. Um, but we don't I, don't, I don't think we really need it. I think everything's good and squared away. So that's season two. I like the squad. Oh, Mad Bum. Whoa, completely thought, thought. I just completely forgot about that one. We paid him 14 a year, 10 million less than what Garrett Cole wanted. I know it's another big contract, but there really weren't too many other pitchers that I was interested in free agency. And I feel like Justin Verlander is probably a player that I don't like. I think after the season is going to be traded away. We still have uh, Zach Granke, who's decreasing as well. So that's why I wanted to strengthen, you know, with Jamison Tyone, just in case things start falling apart. So I'm going to see how this plays out. I know we do have a couple aging arms here as well. That's why I kind of started to think about let's get James get some younger arms just in case everyone starts uh, falling apart and decreasing in overall. So that's season two so far. Let's see how that starts off. So at the deadline of season two, just Martez is not cutting it. He's he's really struggling. I think his ERA is like a six or six and a half or something like that. It's just, you would think he's got beat potential. He's a young pitcher. He's going to get better. It's just, he doesn't. He doesn't. We're going to trade him and Miles Straw, who is one of our better outfield prospects, but realistically, he's just not going to feature in this rebuild for Tyler Glasnow of the Rays 85 overall his contract's going to be low with arbitration and then with his stats he's sitting at like a, a three four or five in the rotation which is kind of what we need and I kind of like that so after that um, I do want to kind of point out that our bullpen is struggling a bit as well as our starting rotation with Verlander um, that's really about it Verlander struggling a bit I mean it it's expected he does have one more year I feel like we should probably just hold on to him anyways Valdez is at a four. Jeffers is at almost a seven, which sucks because, or is it Jeffers? I think it's Jeffers. Um, he's struggling. Um, so is Devensky, which worries me because it, it should be a little bit better. Um, Andrew Miller's going down. Luckily, this is his last year as well. So um, it's, it's, I don't know. I feel like we should be doing better, even though our, we're not doing poorly. I might try to trade uh, Jeremy Jeffers and then just see maybe, maybe it's time to bring up that, um, arm and maybe josh james or even try out james karen chick and then see how that goes it says he's going down which that's kind of worries me maybe he needs to just get pulled up into the majors and let like let's see how it plays out so i might make one more trade let's see what we can do all right so we're gonna trade jeremy jeffers ryan hartman and peter solomon for harlan garcia of the marlins looks to be a solid little lefty in the bullpen we probably need another one just in case andrew miller and fran Valdez don't pan out so i think that's it I think that's how we're going to rock for the rest of the year. I do I do want to get this guy involved. I just don't know how. Um, so maybe maybe take him out of the closer spot. That might help him out a little bit. And that's that's how we're going to rock for now. We'll see how it plays out. I'm worried about Verlander. I'm worried about Granky. 
Um, but everybody else, I think we should be fine. I feel like the team plays really well. We just, we got to get past, you know, the Yankees or the Dodgers. I feel like they're like my two Achilles heels. So see how it plays out for the rest of the season. See you guys at the end of the year. The more and more I kind of just like sim through this and think about it. I'm really worried about Granky and Verlander just being like 73s by the end of next year. So we may have to trade one of them. And obviously it's going to be Verlander because we're doing a Granky rebuild. But you guys can see 99 and 63. We won the division again, taking on the winner of the wild card. And let's take a look at our league leaders. Bumgarner looks like he replaced Verlander in our rotation as the ace. And then when you go to the awards, we have... A Cy Young winner. Uh, looks like George Springer didn't have an MVP type year like last year, but I'm still not going to freak out. Let's take a look at our bullpen. Framber Valdez. He might be a player. I move towards the middle of the rotation or maybe even take Andrew Miller's spot here. Uh, Garcia, very good. Holy cow. 2.19 ERA, a 1.13 whip. Rondon wasn't as good. I only brought him back for a year, so he might be a player I look to release maybe uh, maybe give him another year i mean it's not a terrible year 381 era for a reliever it's not terrible davinsky though is a player i'm a little worried about he doubled his era that's not great joe smith 36 year old warrior out here pitching a 1.31 era and a 0.9 whip just unreal andrew miller 3.6 era i'm not gonna freak out about very close to what he did last year even and his whip actually went down uh, I think he pitched less innings, though. Yeah, a lot less innings. So maybe he's suited more towards the middle relief role, and then we just move somebody else into this uh, setup role. Ryan Presley did a lot better than what he did last year. Obviously, his innings went down quite a bit as well, but still very, very good. And then Osuna has been amazing for us. So looking at the lineup, Sogard was an amazing bench bat, like just unreal bench bat for us. Good on base percentage, really good on base percentage. You guys can see his average slugging, OPS, everything. Just amazing. Alemis Diaz was not as good as last year. And Jake Mariznik was a little bit down too. So you guys can see Freudis Nova looks to be like a really solid shortstop for the future. He won't feature, but that's all right. So it's looking like Kyle Tucker's 100% taken over for Brantley. I'm not saying he had a bad year by any means. If anything, his on-base percentage slugging and OPS were very similar. Same with average. Very consistent. It's just I would rather have someone a little bit younger who can help us out. It also opens up cap space, which I like. Carlos Correa, very good year. Jose Altuve, very good year. He hit 35 home runs with 102 RBIs. Just unreal. George Springer, very good. I mean, he's a free agent this year, so we're going to have to pay him quite a bit. But I feel like he's putting up crazy good numbers. Why wouldn't I pay him? Alex Bregman had a very good year as well. Average home runs, RBIs all went up. Doubles went up by 10. Uh, Jordan, Jordan Alvarez, I mean, almost identical to what he did last year. Just crazy. Um, Kyle Tucker wasn't as good average-wise as last year. He did have more at-bats, though. More strikeouts, yes. Uh, but pretty similar run production and everything. I think he'll benefit from being an everyday player. Pedro Severino is up to an 88. He hit 278. He added 11 home runs. 20 RBIs almost. I mean, whew, that's good to see. And then Junior Campos. I think I need to move him to be an actual first baseman, and I think that will help his progress a little bit. So overall, I'm pretty happy with the team. And just to just to actually do it, and so I don't forget, we're going to do it now. Nope, not that one. There we go. So he's now a first baseman for the future. So there we go. We're taking on probably what? the Oh, the Angels this time, really. So if you missed my Trevor Bauer rebuild, Griff... Griffin Canning was on our squad and he did horribly for two seasons. Let's go see what he's doing for the Angels this year because I looked at him and he's having an unreal year. What the heck? 3 1 ERA, 1.18 whip. Why couldn't he do that when we had him? But, anyways, let's get into it. We win that game, we lose this one. Why, why can't why can't I ever beat the winner of the wild card? I don't understand why this always happens so Tyler Glasnow is going to take the mound we got we got the lineup we're going against Felix Pena first and second two outs we get two runs thanks to Bregman there we go looking at their lineup it looks like yeah it looks like maybe Jason Castro's new but outside of that of course Mike Trout goes deep um outside of that it's a pretty standard Angels lineup so we started off with a single Ooh, first and second no outs George Springer brings in the run that's all we need two run lead can we get some more, though? I'm, I have a feeling we're going to need more than just a two-run lead. It is a tie game once again. Come on. 
come on guys let's hold let's hold the lead let's ex like let's stretch the lead let's get a lead back Glazo, i need you to get one more out bud i don't think you're going to though uh we're gonna go to valdez valdez does get that out which is good junior compost the rookie comes in with ooh, a solo shot that's great um I don't know here. Uh, Davinsky. Perfect. That's what we needed right there. Come on. Let's get a run in. One more run. I ah, couldn't do it. Lefty, righty, lefty. So boom, boom. This is where I'm a little worried. So we're going to go to Andrew Miller. Gets us the out. Perfect. Single. There we go. Double play though. All right. Ninth inning. We're going to go to our man Osuna. Shut the door. There we go. We defeat the Angels four to three. Whew. That was a little close. Um, we got one more game against them in this series. We're home at Minute Maid. We got to go Bumgarner, even though I want to go Verlander. But we, we got to be safe here. We got to get an early lead, too. Come on. I couldn't do it there. They do get one run thanks to a Cole Calhoun double. First and second, no outs. Double or one out. Double play ends it, though. David Fletcher extends the lead to two. I swear, I swear if we can't get to Griffin Canning, that's going to be so devastating, especially since when we traded for him with the Reds, he was so bad. So, all right, we get one there. One base runner, not a run. I mean, it's a pitching duel. Three hits between for both teams. All right, that's really three nothing. This is not looking promising. We're going to we're going to end it there. We're going to go to Rondon. Good inning out of him. We just can't we can't hit canning that's the thing we just can't hit them and that's just frustrating i don't understand why we can't hit them all right it comes down to this can we do it we just we just got shut out complete game shut out by griffin canning and that that ends our season again oh man all right well was that the angels that the angels beat the dodgers so i got i just guess they were the better team I guess they were the better team. Um, I don't know what happened. Again, I feel like we should have won. We had the matchups and everything. So, Andrew Miller didn't pitch terribly at all. Um, the thing is, we're going to have to pay some people. <laughs> so, let's give let's give Spring. Ooh, Springer's only 8.5. I thought it was going to be a little bit higher. I feel like Sogard, if he wants a little, a little bit, we can make it work. 5. Let's go to 5 million. See if we can get that one. And then... Jake Marisnik. We don't really have anybody else in the outfield. And he's been decent for us. So we'll just go five for him as well. We'll let the rest of the guys walk. See what is available in free agency. And we'll just go from there. Um, mostly because usually in free agency, you can get him for a little bit cheaper. So looking at contracts. We definitely want to bring everybody back. Arbitration. I'm most likely going to offer everybody arbitration here. Maybe not Aledmiz Diaz. I might look to bring in somebody else instead. But... Let's see what we can do for season three. All right, season three, not a lot of moves were made, but I feel like there were moves that are going to help out the bullpen for the most part. I think we just made one or two moves to the bullpen. Uh, we added Kalame. That was the big one. We have Karen Check here. I'm not too sure about him. I do want to give him a shot. You know, the Ks per nine are kind of high. Everything else is around the 60s. It might be good. Valdez is moving to the middle relief spot. And then Josh James is here. I'm not sold on Josh James. He normally does pretty poorly. But again, it's pretty RNG with franchise, so it's it's hit or miss. I brought in my very reliable Brian Goodwin to help us out here. Um, Sogard is back, and then you guys can see what the lineup is like. Uh, Kyle Tucker, once the season gets going, he'll definitely be in the 80s. And I feel like with what we have, it's a pretty solid lineup. I'm really intrigued to see how Junior Campos does. He hit 17 home runs last year. Yes, the average was down, but I feel like he definitely could do pretty solid. So we'll see how it goes. I've I'm just worried about this. James and Karen Check. Those are the two I'm worried about. But I want to try out new players. Let's see how it goes. I'll see you guys if we need to make any trades. At the deadline, we're going to trade Josh James. We're going to move Framber Valdez up to that long relief role. Framber is not that much better. But Josh James is just, he's really struggling. He's got, what, a 6.18, 6.21 ERA. And we're going to go for Sam Tui Valala of the Mariners. He's having an okay year. Not as good as last year, but still a really solid season. When we look at the rest of the lineup, though, and the rotation, um, my big worries are kind of coming to fruition. 
Granky and Verlander, man. Come on. I need a little bit better out of you. Even Tyler Glass now is struggling, which is a little bit worrisome. Um, the rest of the squad is okay. Um, this guy's actually not doing too bad. You know, a 380 ERA is not too bad. Uh, Kalame is struggling a bit, so I moved him out of the setup role. Uh, that's 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 a little bit worrisome. That um, And then when we look at our lineup, it's not too bad. They're not doing terrible at all. A lot of them are hitting in the high 200s, 300s. So I like what we have here. Pedro Severino is a low-key amazing pickup. Like, holy cow. Um, our bench isn't doing terrible either. So overall, I'm pretty happy with the lineup that we've created. It's the the Granky Verlander situation. And I mean, when you look at the rest of our pitchers, maybe we bring up Forrest Whitley, but I don't know. You know, I think if we want to win, we have to get rid of Verlander. So let me see what I can do. All right, so we're going to go for Hyunjin Ryu of the Dodgers. They signed him to another contract. He's having a phenomenal season. Yes, he is, you know, on the, the later part of his career, age 34, but he's a lot better than what Verlander is. Contracts are similar. What we're going to be trading are Richard Gabriel, who um, his potential has actually gone down since we've drafted him in the season one. And this is a guy found in free agency. You guys can see there's no other statistics. There's no other things going on here. I'll actually, before we do the trade, I'll show you that I picked him up in free agency. Um, roster history, you guys can see. Where is he? Where is he? Where is he? Oscar Francisco, free agent signing. He actually looks really good. Good fielding, good arm strength as well. Decent speed. I think in the future he would be really good. But unfortunately, we don't have a future. This is our only chance to win everything. So we're going to trade him, Richard Gabriel, and then obviously... Verlander for the man Hyunjin Ryu of the Dodgers so that's the trade we get yes an older pitcher actually it's not older than what Verlander was but um it's it's better than what we currently have Granky unfortunately is the lowest rated in the squad but we got to keep him this is his rebuild I think that that should help us out a little bit with the pitching let's see how the rest of the season plays out all right this has to be the year because the way we finish the the second half of the season whoo I'm liking, I'm liking what I'm seeing, and I have a feeling the pitching changes really helped. You guys can see we're 104 and 58, taking on the winner of the wild card, which is my my Achilles heel, my weakness. Sogard had the most doubles, and then Ryu, Ryu showing that he's he was worth the trade. Awards wise, a Gold Glove. That's that's about it. So let's take a look at the lineup. Sogard, I mean, you can see he had he played almost every single game. He was very good, almost hit 300, had a career year actually. Home runs, RBIs. 53 doubles is insane and at the age of 34 whoo carlos correa had an amazing year as well 40 home runs 105 rbis almost a 300 average those are scary numbers altuve's putting up really good numbers as well home run numbers dipped a little bit but that's not what he's expected to do you know you're expecting high average which he did so amazing george springer very good uh, again just crazy crazy good production out of him he hit 321 ops at 990 He's just, a, he's a glitch. Uh, Jordan, Jordan Alvarez, I keep I keep saying it wrong. Home runs are up there, RBIs are up there. Again, he's an amazing just player to pick up as well. Alex Bregman, you know, another 30 home run season, 115 RBIs, OPS is in the 800, slugging's close to 500, crazy good. Kyle Tucker, 281, 36 home runs. Whew, 36 home runs, crazy good stuff right there. Um, almost 100 RBIs, he's, he went from a 79 to an 86 this season junior compost man that average in that that average is dipping that's a little disappointing but i'm not gonna freak out about it pedro severino look at that fielding look at that bat 38 home runs from a catcher is like unheard of nowadays he hit 311 an ops of 974 oof i love it so it looks like someone got sent down and you guys can see martin maldonado 288 we brought him back in free agency I don't think I mentioned that. So who did they send down? They sent down Karen Jack. Why? He had a 367 ERA. That's not bad at all. Um, Tyone, great numbers. Amazing numbers. Oof, I love that. A 1.09 whip. Love it. Um, Bumgarner, not terrible. I mean, 3-4. I mean, it's not a bad ERA. I'm, I'm not going to freak out about that. Glasnow struggled a bit. Rio did well. And Granky did well as well. When we look at the bullpen really fast... I feel like Karen Chuck is definitely a player we need in there based on everyone's performance. Overall, not terrible, but still, I mean, Karen Chuck might be an extra arm that'd be nice to have. We'll probably leave it like that. Let's get into these playoffs, see how things go. Alrighty, postseason time. We're taking on the Red Sox. 
Oh, wow. Okay. All right. <laughs> nothing, nothing unusual here. I mean, look at that. We had 12 more wins than them. And when we look at their squad, I bet you their squad isn't even that good. So how are we not going to be able to get past them? Obviously, Junior Campos is a huge downgrade compared to other players. He's 73 rated, but I feel like we should be able to win these games. Looking at their squad, yes, they have Mookie Betts. Yes, they have Xander Bogarts, Ben Attendi, but looking at the rest, I mean, I don't really see why we're going to lose. We're losing one nothing, And like I say, why we're going to lose? Because I know it's going to happen. Like, there's just no way around it. Sogard is clutch. The nerd comes in clutch. But then look at that. Jose Osuna has a double and a triple in this game. Where's the offense? I feel like the offense has just gone cold during every single one of these, like, do or die games. So there's a double, one out. Come on. Here we go. There we go. Jordan Alvarez comes in the clutch. That's not a way to start it. We are in the seventh. What do we got? Righty, righty, lefty. We'll go to we'll go to Column A. He walks somebody. And we're gonna we're, we're gonna play the matchups at this point. We we kind of have to and hope we get out of this. Oh man, come on. Oh, we finally got Osuna out. That was clutch. Sogard. Sogard ties the game. The nerd is just a beast. He's a beast. That's what he is. Good inning, good inning by Tui Valala. There we go. Ninth inning. Here we go. Can we get a lead? We can't. We go three straight. Three straight. All right. We got to go to someone a little bit more reliable here. Maybe Presley. Can't sack bunt. Strike out. Walk. Fly out. Whew. A little close there. All right. Three innings. That's pro or three outs. That's probably the last of it for Presley. Can we at least get a run here? Double play. That's not what we need. A triple. <sighs> there's one out we're gonna play the matchup again Garcia gets the out perfect and then we just go one two three once again like come on we gotta score runs Severino fielder's choice so at least we have 55 speed on first Correa like let's take a look at our the heart of our lineup the three four five spot are combined three for 16 in today's game I'm sorry what like you just that that can't happen. We can't win games if with with those kind of stats. Bases loaded, one out, sack fly at least. We at least get the win or the the run there. Osuna is gonna come in. Oof. Okay, it, we we use the entirety of our bullpen, which is a huge issue for that. But we at least got the win. We're going into the elimination game here as well. We're at minute made. We are the home. We got to give it to Granky. We can't. We can't. How? Ugh, I can't I can't cancel it now. So we're gonna go to Granky. It's his rebuild. We're down one nothing. Jose Osuna is being a thorn in my side for sure. Double play. That was clutch. That was huge. Bases loaded with no outs. We get that double play. Come on, Granky. You that's he's wheeling and dealing. He's he's allowed four hits, yes, but I mean he's he's getting the outs when we need him to. Perfect. We're facing Tyler Maley. Tie ball game thanks to Bregman and Kyle Tucker makes it a two run game. All right, oh, a tie game because of De La Guerra. Oh, are you serious? So we got five out of him. So that's probably it for Granky. Yeah, he's dead. Um, Devensky, first first batter, really gives him the lead. Oh, we get the lead runner on. Anything, anything out of anybody would be so nice right now. The offense is just abysmal. What is with it? All right, so two innings left. I mean, it all comes down to this. Jordan Alvarez, thank you. Then Bregman gives us the lead. Ooh. Ooh. Osuna, come on, shut the door. Whew, we made it past the first round. What a relief. It says we're taking on the Yankees. We should be all set, right? It should be the top of the rotation. It is. Perfect. Take it on the Yankees here. Get a good two. Ooh, no, come on. Don't squander the lead. We're up 2 nothing, and you just fall apart like that. What happened? Um, obviously, Jamison Tyone is going to take the mound. Jose Iglesias, J.D. Martinez, Clint Frazier in left. So a couple changes to the lineup. Nothing too crazy. Two run lead for them. And then we get into a double play that ends the inning. Like, it, it really is the offense. The offense is just falling apart. Oh, as I say that, Pedro Severino ties the game. Okay, so it's a little bit of a pitcher's duel right now. 
if we can get like five six innings out of tyone that would be really good especially since our bullpen's probably just dead after that series against who did we just play the red sox I almost completely forgot after that first and second springer come on tucker can you be clutch you cannot <laughs> so seven that's probably it for tyone Adovino comes in. Ooh, Junior Campos gets on. Sogard gets a walk. First and or first and third, two outs. Altuve brings in the lead run. That's what we needed. All right, so we're gonna take Tyone out. We're gonna go to Presley. Come on, get us out of this. Two. Come on, Presley, dude. Come on. You're the setup man. You're the man that's supposed to come in and just shut the door at that moment. And it's just. I don't get it. How come every single time this happens? Like, what what is going wrong at this moment? Like, <sighs> Presley, that one what was it two outs and you just fall apart. Osuna allowed two runs. Tui Valala allowed a run or two or three. I don't. <sighs> man that that one hurts that one hurts a lot i feel like we i mean i'm looking at the offense and yeah there's some 400 hitters i mean i think junior compost was just i think he was a reach i think we really should have upgraded on him and i think that's probably where i went wrong um but outside of that i mean when you got 250 you got 200 227 244 right here look at that that's that's the heart of your lineup that's where you want everybody to just do amazing and they oh man that's rough to rough that's rough to see you know the pitching as a whole was a, a little shaky i guess i guess maybe we could have done better done different moves but i don't know so that's where it's gonna end i hope you guys enjoyed today's granky rebuild we were so close so close again we just can't win that world series and to be honest i think we made a pretty good squad you know granky's probably gonna leave after this year um maybe find a new pitcher instead of glass now it doesn't look like he ever really does much maybe find someone else instead of valdez and you can definitely make some moves here and there overall i mean i think the lineup's good though the lineup you're set i mean maybe a new first baseman but that's really about it so i hope you guys enjoyed today's rebuild if you did hit the like button down below subscribe if you're new and enjoyed the content don't forget if you guys ever go to anything that needs tickets and you need some tickets and you need a discount use the code ant ortiz for 20 dollars off your purchase and that's really going to wrap it up, guys. Let me know in the comment section which rebuild you would like to see next. And I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace.